Hi, hello everybody, Jesse Martin here, host of the French Canadian Legacy Podcast. And it's been a bit since we've done a video for our YouTube slash Facebook page. But when I went back and I started listening again to the preview episode for the Joseph Dunn interview, which we had coming up uh, this coming Tuesday, he ended that dis- we ended that discussion with a discussion of like an omelet that Joseph talked about he made. Because Joseph, I mean, those of you who have listened to the podcast know I'm a huge fan I am of Joseph Dunn. Um, one of the things he like, knows a lot about, a lot more than I do, is French wine, French food. And so he talked about like a dish that he made that he really, really enjoyed when I asked him about kind of what his favorite French food was. And he talked about this omelet that he made. Now, we're going to try to recreate that omelet. Now, I'm not going to try to recreate that omelet because I can't cook whatsoever. Fortunately, a very, very lucky to have my girlfriend Heather Howell with me here today and she's going to attempt to make this omelet that Joseph discussed but what I will at least do is show that what we just bought when we went shopping to hopefully get the correct ingredients to me to make excuse me the Joseph Dunn omelet all right so the first thing Joseph Dunn talks about well first of all he bought everything at Hannaford um, we don't have an endless budget here at the headquarters of the French Canadian Legacy Podcast, but we go shopping at Hannaford's up here in Manchester. Joseph talks about having one large brown egg. Well, we didn't have any large eggs in our house. We did happen to have some medium of brown eggs, so that's going to have to do. So we're going to throw a couple of those in there. Other ingredients that Joseph talks about. He talks about some heavy whipping cream. So we make sure to get that for this omelet. Okay, so Joseph talked about having fig preserves. Now, we couldn't find any fig preserves. We did find something in like the special, special, excuse me, fancy food area of Hannaford, something called fig fruit paste. I have no idea if that's good enough. It's gonna have to be for the purposes of this video. Uh, Next, he talked about having a really good French cheese, and he mentioned a couple of them. One of them he mentioned was Camembert, so we did pick up Camembert. This is actually a cheese I am familiar with. I was very fortunate, maybe about five years ago, I went on a Viking River cruise up and down the Seine. You go through Normandy, you get the chance to eat a lot of Camembert, so that's how I was introduced to it, so I still love this stuff. Uh, As far as the final ingredient, we have some Mousse Truffet, Truffet? I don't really know how to even pronounce this. He said to get some uh, mousse pate. Again, there weren't a ton of options to choose from at our Hannaford. Uh, this looked like it worked. I mean, it's got a cool French name. Truffles are always fun. I'm hoping it's going to work in this omelet. And then the final thing he talked about is having it with a Sancerre, a white Sancerre. So we went to the liquor and wine outlet and we were able to find uh, Domaine Cherrier Sancerre from 2022. So we're gonna make sure this thing is chilled because again, that was something Joseph specifically mentioned in his video to have a chilled Sancerre. So that's gonna be our beverage when we have this Joseph Dunn omelet. So we're gonna start with two eggs. And I'm gonna ad lib and put in a little bit of salt. Have to salt my eggs personally. Next, the heavy whipping cream. And we're gonna whisk. All right, moved over here to the stove area. And he says to use a lot of butter. That wow. seems like a lot of butter. You're not, you weren't messing around with that butter. All right, so we got the butter melting. 
in the pan. What are we what are we up to now? So now we're gonna kind of pre-slice the cheese. Pre-slice the cheese. So we can have this ready. I'm trying to think the best way to do it for an omelet. I'm thinking I'll just take these thin slices out of it. Sure. All right. It's sufficiently uh, bubbling with this butter here. Yes, and there's a, a nutty smell. Nutty smell, okay. Sounds right, feels yep. right. Uh, here we go. Now we're adding in the eggs. And you're definitely cooking because I have a tendency, for those who don't know me, to cook everything to absolute death. Right, and notably, it's not a fault in your cooking. That is your cooking preference. It is my preference, especially whenever I cook a, any type of vegetable, I cook it to absolute death. So the way I like to do this, I know he mentioned kind of souffleing it. I don't know what that means. <laughs> that was good. But I like to, once the edges are cooked, start moving the uncooked middle. Oh yeah, that seems right. Yep. This I, I always get those bubbles. Yeah, they'll go away. And I like to keep it nice and loose, make sure it doesn't stick to the pan, because that makes plating very difficult. Right. And I actually never flip my omelets. Okay. I like to just keep moving the raw center towards the edges. This actually looks really good. Put on about half of it so you can fold it over. Yep. Sweet. Okay. And then we're gonna follow that up with the pate. The pate, yeah. I think the goal is to get a little bit of everything in every bite. That makes sense, sure. Cool. All right. So now we're gonna plate. And I just sort of help it onto the plate. Oh, look at that. that works. That's, yeah. Okay, that looks like an omelet. We got some fig fruit paste. We got, some, <laughs> we got something called fig fruit paste. That we're gonna lovingly drape over the omelet. Look at this. And yeah, maybe a little bit more. Mm -hmm. I'll overwhelm it with fig fruit paste, but. See, I love fig, oh no. Okay, we we're going to do a video that showed us tasting these omelets, but then we kind of both decided that watching people eat is kind of weird. So we decided we're just going to show you how they're making the second omelet while we talk about kind of what we thought of the omelet that was just made, along with, of course, the wine pairing. Yeah, I liked it a lot. I think from the first bite, I knew we were onto something interesting. Yeah, no, I'm with that. Like you, I'm I'm a generally a big pate fan, but like you, I wasn't super hype. I mean, I liked it, but I wasn't super hype with the pate by itself. But the two of those ingredients together, and I think the fig really actually worked. And I was kind of surprised at how how well I thought that that fig flavor really meshed with the other ingredients. Yeah, the fig definitely brightened it. The pate was almost like a baseline in a song where it's not the biggest, brightest, boldest flavor, but you almost, you would miss it if it wasn't there. And then I thought the cheese melted perfectly. It was a really nice, subtle, nutty flavor. But uh, the one thing I will say I'm not sure we exactly nailed was the choice of wine. Only because the wine was really good and I enjoyed it. But I think we were supposed to be looking for something sweet. And what we ended up with was 
definitely a dry wine. There's there's no sweetness whatsoever into what we chose. Maybe I misunderstood the directions I was outlined by Joseph Dunn. Yeah, as far as white wines would go, I would definitely get it again. I thought it was dry, fruity. Yeah, it wasn't sweet at all. Definitely enjoyed it when I just had it by itself. But I remember when we had it by the with the uh, omelet, I was a little surprised just because I was expecting a sweet because that's what I thought we were <laughs> was we were supposed to have with this omelet. So that was a little bit of a difference. But overall really good omelet and I would certainly try it again for sure.